begin to sit with a straight back and keep your soles of your feet together and interlock your fingers onto your toes and begin to flap your thighs so this helps in opening your tightness in your groins and your hips make sure your breath is really normal to intensify the stretch in your groins pull your feet closer to your pelvis and begin to flap for a couple of times so feel very strongly with your hands on the mat now tuck your toes make sure you engage your navel and slowly lift yourself up when you lift yourself up your focus is to lift your hips back and up so lengthening lengthening your spine keeping that position of your spine completely straight you're going to press your heels into the floor you're going to start from Uttanasana, raising your hands all the way up, stretching up, interlock your fingers, stretch up and come down from your hips, reaching all the way down, catching hold of the back of your legs to pull yourself towards your knee. Begin to lie down on your back and place your heels as close as possible to your butt and hold your ankles, make sure your thumb is outside and when you're ready slowly inhale and lift your hips all the way up so try and reach as high as possible but your breath should be in the normal range and stay here for a couple of deep breaths Sukhasana is nothing but this cross leg comfortable cross leg position that I'm sitting in right now you just put one leg in and comfortably place the other leg over it. This is a good alternative to the more difficult Padmasana or for people who have knee problems and can't sit in Vajrasana, they can sit in this comfortable seated position. This helps open out the hips and also lengthens the spine. Which is a full forward fold. So you can catch hold of your toes if you can reach your toes or you can hold your ankles, calf muscles, wherever you're comfortable and pull yourself forward. So the aim must be to reach the front of the leg and not to reach the forehead to the knee. You can place your hands on beyond your feet like the way I have. Take your right foot across your left knee and place it on the mat. Make sure your hip does not lift off the mat. Place your right hand behind you for support. Inhale, lift the left arm, twist and place your hand on the foot. Look over your right shoulder. If you cannot reach your foot, bend your elbow and place your hand on your shoulder across. Use your upper arm to push the knee back. Make sure there is no tension in the shoulders. From Sarvangasana moving on to Halasana, you need a lot of core strength here. So just take your time, keep yourself comfortable and without bending your legs here, inhale deeply and as you exhale, just push your hips down and bring your legs all the way up above your head. So take your time, do not rush into the posture, keep exhaling, use your core, engage your core muscles and bring your leg all the way over your head. And now your hands can get interlocked here and bring it all the way down, strengthening your shoulders here and stretching your legs all the way back. Extend the leg out in front of you. Bend the foot so that your heel is placed at the junction between your thigh and your hip. See to that your toes are pointing inwards and your back is nice and straight, lengthening through the back and keeping the chest nice and open. As you inhale, you raise both arms up, extending the spine further and as you exhale, you hinge forward, coming down from the hip, 
and trying to bring either your chin or your forehead into the knee. Hold for five deep breaths. Sitting on your heels, slowly move on to a table. Exhale and lower the hips to the heels and forehead on the floor. Have the knees together or if you're more comfortable, spread the knees slightly apart. The arms can be overhead with your palms on the floor. Palms or fists can be stacked under the forehead. Or arms can be alongside the body with palms up.